Hey everyone, I'm Brandon Vineyard. I've been listing and selling bank foreclosures since 2002. In today's video, we're going to learn more about reverse mortgage foreclosures. Now, why are these important? Well, this loan has become more and more popular over the last few years. I'm listing more of these properties, and if I'm listing more of them, then I know they're being saturated throughout the market in different parts of the country. In 2021, you're going to see more and more reverse mortgage foreclosures. The procedures and policies they have are a little bit different than a lot of their foreclosures. In today's video, we're going to go over a lot of the rules and regulations and procedures to put an offer on a reverse mortgage foreclosure. Well, maybe you've seen this paid ad on Facebook already, but this is Arlo, America's number one rated reverse mortgage. I think this is kind of cool because this is just showing that companies are advertising they're pushing reverse mortgages. And if they're pushing it publicly, especially on places like Facebook, you got to remember, you got to be 62 to get a reverse mortgage. So they're spending money advertising on Facebook for a crowd at least 62. That's kind of interesting. But all that means is we're going to see more and more reverse mortgages. And the more we see, the more foreclosures we're going to see. And if I'm already listing a lot of them, then I'm not the only one in throughout the country so if you're an investor, this is just a good product to know. So let's jump into it. And the bottom line, I'm sure most people watching this probably already know and realize exactly what a mortgage or a, a reverse mortgage is, but it's basically, it's just a special loan that allows the homeowner to use their equity. They can pull it out in a lump sum or they can get monthly payments. But as long as they live in the property and maintain and keep up the tax and insurance, they're good. The two biggest requirements, you must be at least 62 and the house has to have equity. If there's no equity, then this is a mute point because there's no reverse mortgage. And there's basically really two different types. And the one we see the most is the one that's insured by FHA. And FHA is a federal housing admin, which is part of HUD. And this ensures almost all reverse mortgages, okay? They have a program, we call it the HECM program. And if you're an agent, you'll see this term used a lot, maybe in the MLS notes or about the property, but you'll see HECM, the word HECM. If you see the word HECM, you know it's reverse mortgage. And HECM just, it stands for the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage Program. In its insurance, it protects the lender, not the borrower. It guarantees that the lender is going to be repaid in full if there's a foreclosure, basically. So what are some possible triggers? Well, the biggest thing that I've seen is the homeowner moves out, is no longer living in the property as their primary residence. The borrower fails to occupy the property for 12 consecutive months due to health or mental issues. Uh, so you got to remember, the occupants or homeowners are a minimum of 62. If they're older, they go into hospice, they move in with family members, they're sick. This is what I see more times than not, what gets it all triggered. Second reason is, of course, unfortunately, death. And the third is they simply fail to meet the obligations of the mortgage, which is normally the taxes and insurance aren't being kept up current. Okay, so what's the big deal? Why are reverse mortgages, or, or how are they different from all the other foreclosures if you're an investor? Well, the biggest thing is they fall under this HUD guideline statute. And the statute basically is the rules about how to buy or sell a reverse mortgage foreclosure. They have very specific procedure rules for how a transaction takes place. So basically, the requirements, the do's and don'ts, fall under this guideline, this statute right here. And if you're an agent, you'll see that statute listed in the MLS notes a lot. Um, anytime I have one, those notes are always, you know, it's, it's in the agent notes, you'll see them. This comes from an actual um, contract. I thought this was kind of neat to show. Um, the first one we have the EMD deposit, and it shows right here, buyer's minimum deposit for cash is 10%. If it's financing, it's 1%. And here's some just easy, good advice for agents and buyers. If you're paying cash, 
and it's an investment property or it's a foreclosure, you should be putting down 10%. That's going to help you get a lot more offers accepted. The second one has to do with um, buyer's closing costs. And I take this as just a general disclosure based on their denims. Just by default, they're stating we're not paying any of this stuff. So, you know, just letting everyone know, buyers know, we're not going to pay or reimburse or credit buyers for FHA or other financing costs or fees nor pay for credit of any cost, fees, surveys, home warranty plans, inspections, termite inspections, or repairs unless, unless otherwise stated as defined above. And you'll see in a second, there are places and you can't ask for stuff. My advice always is don't, but we'll get into that in a minute. So also, I thought this was really important because this shows you the inspections and it shows you right here maximum of 10 calendar days two big things here and this is one thing i preach never ask for more than 10 days don't do it you're just asking for a calendar if you ask for more than 10 days a lot of programs will default and allow like reverse mortgage foreclosures 10 days fannie mae's another one that allow up to 10 days don't ever ask for more than 10. i don't have any client i've ever worked for in my career 18 plus years that will allow default wise to more than 10 days. This is the actual first part of the contract. And I thought this was kind of cool because it shows you right here, the three calendar days of the effective date. Okay. Effective date's always the last date. It's going to be the seller when it's a foreclosure. Um, the last date the seller signs the contract. That's your effective date. Okay. So three calendar days, not business days that's a big one never get business days confused always go by calendar days but what's neat about this and you'll see my arrows it shows you all the blanks for things that they say they will pay for if you ask for them and it's granted that's not the way it really works don't ask for that little stuff never put an REO contract in and ask for a survey or the little stuff if you're going to ask for it put it in a lump sum amount and just have the seller credit, you know, the buyer 2K, 3K, whatever it might be in buyer closing costs. Don't henpeck it and itemize the stuff like this contract shows because they will not go for that. Okay, I wanted to finish up real quick and give you just a couple of just points that I came up with. Um, there's a couple in here that are different than any other type of foreclosure. But to start with, when it comes to a reverse mortgage foreclosure, the list of price is always obtained by the appraised value. Okay, it's always off the appraised value. That's one thing you know when it's a HECM or reverse mortgage foreclosure, that list price, that was the actual appraised price. So some appraiser put that sticker on it. They can sell, and I want to emphasize to anyone, it doesn't matter if it's an heir or not, that's a big misconception. They can sell to anyone, but no less than 95% of that current appraised value, which is the current list price. So n basically, you're not getting any more than a 5% discount. That's it. So in my opinion, that property better be priced right or it's not going to sell. They're also sold in as-is condition. They don't make repairs. So be prepared. If you're financing, if you're an agent and you're working with a buyer that's got a VA or FHA loan, I would not waste a nickel of my time showing them reverse mortgage foreclosures. Um, I would not. You, you might find a diamond in the rough and find one that's in good enough condition, but most of them, at least in my area, are never going to pass. So here, once again, the EMD is 10% if you're cash, 1% if you're financing. Here's the big one that really drives everybody nuts. And nothing I can do about it. I actually love this rule because I don't have to get involved with it. But no utilities are going to be activated. We as listing agents do not get reimbursed. We are not allowed to activate utilities. The buyers can in their own name for inspections. And there's a form that you sign and fill out about getting them activated. But if you're a buyer investor, just remember, if you want to inspect, you're turning that stuff on yourself. The listing agent is not going to turn it on. Buyers will receive clear title. Okay, that's not even a question. Um, you won't close, and honestly, most of our closing delays are caused by title issues. You're gonna get clear title. 
there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, or you will not be closing the property. Electronic signatures are allowed. I saw this all, all online everywhere. Yes, they are allowed. I've never done one ever where we were not allowed to use electronic signatures. And another thing, buyer's agents, now not the listing agent, not myself, but a separate buyer's agent from a different company can charge a buyer transaction fee. Okay, that's, they can. I can't and the listing agent can't on a Heckam property, but the buyer's agent can. And another thing, this is just a little tidbit, a lot of people don't even realize, but deficiency judgments, they're not allowed in Heckam loans, which is kind of unique, but I don't, it's probably not a problem at that age and everything else, you know, I mean, what's it gonna, it's probably not gonna serve a purpose, but just so you know, deficiency judgments are not allowed on Heckam loans. So I hope that was um, educational. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, probably drug on a little too far, but I typically do that. A lot of info, a lot of good stuff. Remember, just remember, they're priced from the appraisal. They can't go below 95% and be prepared to put 10% down if you're a cash investor. Hey, if you like the video, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be glad to answer. And as always, have a great day.